Life's too short to drive boring cars. Have you ever thought about, hey, there's a few years ago I seen these vehicles being built, but I don't see them on the street anymore. Why is that? Well, likely because they're all in the scrapyard. There's two main reasons for that. One, of course, is because they're likely junk and they didn't last the test of time. And the other one is that they likely just depreciate into oblivion and most people just send them to the junkyard. So I'm sure you want to know. So I'm going to share with you guys a list of the worst vehicles that you want to avoid so you don't feel like you're throwing your money down the toilet. Let's get into it now. So the first one on our list of cars that I guarantee you probably won't see in a few years just because they won't last and people will get tired of pouring money down that money pit is it Alfa Romeo Giulia like we have here. So here we have a Giulia. Now, arguably they say these are one of the most sporting offerings in their segment. Of course, you can get the four cylinder, two liter turbo engine, as you see in this vehicle, but you can also get the Quadrifoglio, which is the V6 twin turbo engine, which makes a blistering 505 horsepower. And now they're building even more special edition version with an even higher output, but that's not where the problem is. So let's get started. Right there, Alfa Romeo always has character. We've got great LED tail lights. And of course one, and you'll notice there's a couple of exhaust tips on these vehicles, even for the four banger versions. Now there is a bit of a lip here. The vehicles definitely have a little bit of style to them, if not slightly rounded off. They don't quite have the edginess that you're gonna find in some of the BMWs or Audi products. These certainly are a little more rounded off. If you look down the side of the vehicle, it's got a rounded haunches. And the whole side panel is basically a rounded affair. And then you go to the front and it's beautiful. They do have some great interesting touches on the front. I do happen to love that front glitter affair. Of course, you've got their version of the LED headlights with projectors. There is glass top to let the light in. And I love that front grille. It looks sporting and intentional. Definitely as vehicles are coming down, they look in the rear view mirror and you see this bearing down on you. This shows that they mean business. Here you've got this great mirror assembly with the LED strip, keyless entry. And then in the interior, you actually have a pretty nicely equipped vehicle, but still not quite up to the snuff with the BMWs and Audis of the world. The quality does feel slightly substandard, although clean and tidy. And then you've got a sunroof up top, which you're gonna need because you're gonna sit roadside a long time waiting for that tow truck to show up. So you're definitely gonna wanna have as much light so it doesn't feel doomy and gloomy while you're sitting roadside. Now they do have some great rims. Love that wheel. And of course here, you'll notice it has a larger caliper on the front and larger brake setup, but they're not the big cross drilled setup that you're gonna find in some of the, the more sporting intentional vehicles from BMW. The problem is these vehicles never sold that well from the start. Second of all, of course, there's even more difficult to sell as a used vehicle. And even more importantly is the lack of reliability and predicted reliability, which shows that these vehicles are consistently low on the leaderboard. Fuel system related issues, misfiring problems, of course, electrical gremlins where you lose the whole system can black out. I've heard of comments where people just all of a sudden go to get in the car and the whole thing goes dark on them. Essentially we're dealing with a main power supply and a modular related issue with these vehicles. Now while the powertrains are relatively stout, they do have their issues. Air conditioning's a problem, coolant leaks, but in general it's the electrics that are going to let you down and the worst part is you could fix a starter, a water pump, a thermostat. Those are easy to fix but fixing electrical systems that go bad are very difficult. Often means very invasive, pulling panels apart and that's the big issue. Lots of electrical gremlins potentially lurking and as a result many people are going to find themselves exhausted with the expense at the dealer. They're going to get to the point where either they sell the car, put it away to sleep or just stop driving it for fear that something's going to let them down and cost them huge bucks. The Alfa Romeo Giulia, be careful Careful, you probably won't see too many of these around in a few years. So the next vehicle on my list is this beast right here. It's the Mazda RX-8. Now back in the day, the RX-7 was a pretty robust little car, but it was always the apex seals that were the point of contention. They were the failure point in most RX-7s. Then along comes the Renesis engine, 1.3 liter double rotary engine here, and it gets equipped to either a five-speed manual, six-speed manual, four-speed auto, or a five or six-speed automatic transmission. You'll notice there's lots of references to rotary engines right there. They've got these great vents on the side and a pretty basic mirror, but you'll notice a basic handle and these actually have the suicide doors. So the rear doors flip forward. This one has aftermarket wheels and it has an aftermarket exhaust because that's what most people did. The younger buyers got their hands on these little Mazda RX-8s and then they started to tune them and mod them. Now, while there's some great accents, you see vents there and you see that typical reference to the rotary there and the lower splitter, which looks very, very basic. Mazda is generally known for a high level of reliability these days. The rest of the car held up fairly well. Let's take a look inside. 
You had some great styling features to it. A wonderful leather interior with big bolstering. This one comes equipped with a manual gearbox and there's lots of great style elements with this car. It's just really unfortunate Mazda could not keep that engine together. But if any of you are aware, Rob Dom is currently known for building a high performance, high output version of a rotary engine. He's actually built a three rotor engine that he drag races and it makes phenomenal numbers. So he's proving what can actually be done with these engines. Unfortunately, these engines are problematic at the least and at the best they actually run. Stalling, often related to weak compression because of the apex seals. Excessive oil consumption because of the weak apex seals. And selling this car to the scrapyard for 150 bucks, also because of the apex seals. The Mazda RX-8, often purchased by the second, third, fourth owner as a youthful buyer, means these cars often don't have the dollars to be thrown at them, and these vehicles often wind them at the scrapyard. Mazda RX-8, you won't see many of these around. You want the third one that won't last the test of time? It's what we have parked behind us here. It's the BMW 750, but it's not exclusive to the 750. Let's list a few more. 850, 750, 650, 550, as well as the X550i, X650i, and generally anything that shares that 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 that you find under the hood of this 750i right here. Now the problem with this isn't that they're not well made because in fact, the BMWs are actually very well made. They're built to tight tolerances and they're well constructed. I mean, let's take a look around. BMW with their classic headlights and of course their classic kidney grille. But what about down here? You'll notice they've got a front boiler that makes them look fairly stout and aggressive. They all have nice wheels and they have a little vent here which shows that that's specific for the model. How about that little mirror with the LED strip? And look at these wonderful handles. They've got two-tone with chrome on them. And cycling around, you'll notice the body panels look very stout and even slightly aggressive, if not slightly stately. Along the back here, we have this wonderful little slightly ducktail effect. And you've got LED taillights in this X-Drive version, which means it's all-wheel drive and great for cutting through the snow like this. But you'll notice they've got one, two exhaust tips and a nice little chrome strip there, as well as further chrome along the bottom edge of the trunk. They do look very beefy from behind. And there's certain some quality touches. Just look at this great trim that runs up here. It's more than just one flabby piece of trim. There's actually a gasket in there and it looks well constructed. Now you do have a large sunroof there for all the little jokers inside the cabin. Speaking of which, look how luxurious the interior of this vehicle is. It is definitely a place you want to hang out. And hang out you will because you'll be sitting again roadside waiting for the tow truck to haul this vehicle along as it breaks down. But most importantly, it's not just the immediate breakdown roadside, it's the long-term deterioration that this car often sees because it's that hot V is the 4.4 liter V8 that I mentioned earlier. Those turbos in there cook the heads. When they do that, they actually start to wear out the valve guide and valve guide seals and that starts accelerating the oil consumption, blowing smoke out the chute. And the worst part is BMW provide a customer care service, which just meant an evaluation, a constant ongoing assessment of that. In most cases, they rarely ever actually replaced engines. And even if they did, the problem would often return very shortly. Timing change rattling around like, like a bunch of nuts and bolts in a tin garbage can. And ultimately a fail of the chain where it breaks or comes loose. Of course, you've got injection related issues, high pressure fuel pump leaking injectors, oil leaks from the valve cover, the pan gaskets, and coolant leaks from water pumps. And let's face it, it's a BMW, so coolant leaks out of just about every orifice it can with these cars. Because of the high expense, the dollar expense to fix that particular engine, and the fact that these cars depreciate into no man's land within about five or six years, means that that second or third owner often lacks the dollars associated with keeping this thing in tip top shape, meaning you don't see many of these around on the road anymore, and as time goes on, there'll be even less the BMW 750. So the next one on my list is one of the BMWs that we see behind us here. Now, these are from the E90 or E92 generation. These are all sedans, and these actually have all the naturally aspirated inline six-cylinder engines tucked under the hood. Now, these were the last of the longest lasting best BMW engines. They have straight sixes, no turbos, and they're solid. Where the problem is, this version, this generation where you get the 335, which is the three liter twin turbo six-cylinder engine, that one's the problem. But here you'll notice you've got the projector lights, you've got the conventional grill with these funky little chrome eyebrows and a pretty generic looking front bumper on these particular models. BMW has the great rims and this body style is actually quite attractive. You got some flare on the front there, goes down, swoops in, and then of course a little flare at the back kicking out again. 
The interiors on these cars are generally quite well made, other than that one tear in the bolster there. For the most part, these hold up extremely well. Stout looking handles, front and back. And as you circle around to the back, you'll notice old school taillights, but they work. This here is the dual exhaust just on the one side, but as I said, this is the 325. This is one of the better engines BMW's ever made. But if you get the 335 version of that, look out. There's a whole host of issues with the 335. And the 335 just won't last. Why? Even though the internals are highly forged, well-made, it's all of the other parts around it that fail. Electric water pump and thermostat, all one part. Fails, leaks, they crack, they're plastic, they're electric, and they're junk. The twin turbos, they get wastegate rattle, they start to rattle and make noise eventually you've got to replace them. High pressure fuel pump, that was warranted for an extended warranty, but that's still an ongoing issue and that will cost a huge amount of money down the road once BMW walks away from that deal. Fuel injector's an issue. Oil filter housing gasket, that leaks. Sometimes you get mixing, sometimes you get oil or antifreeze dripping down on that side of the engine. You can also lose boost pressure because of the O-rings on the intake manifold plenum. They start to get dried because of turbo heat and once you start losing boost pressure or vacuum, then you have other running issues. The gearboxes are solid, you can get a six-speed manual or the automatic so that's pretty stout but again it's the 335 of the e90 or e92 i don't see many over 100,000 120,000 kilometers and guaranteed you won't see many around anymore they're long gone and so here we have the next one this is an abomination it's the hyundai accent so here we are before we get into the problems you don't see many of these around why because they're not very well made vehicles and they were more part of the transition from hyundai from when they were a disaster to now where they're currently a little more reliable but looking at this car it's a basic mode of transportation very basic headlight setup of course it's a hyundai and pretty basic underbite going on there ouch base mode transport as i mentioned which means nothing fancy going on with the mirror setup no sunroof Pretty basic handle arrangement. And look at this egg shape that you see from behind. Not an overly attractive vehicle by any stretch of the imagination. Pretty basic looking taillight system. But it is functional because you do have a hatch assembly so you can stuff a bunch of junk in the trunk. And you can haul some little monkeys at the back seats in here. And of course, there's lots of room in the front for the, given the size of vehicle, it's surprising how much space you have. But because it's a basic mode of transportation, a lot of people consider these cars throwaway. Well, there are a number of reasons why they are. Number one, soy-based wiring. Yes, rats, mice, get into that car, start chewing it alive from the inside out. There's also airbag related issues that keep coming in. Nickel and dime, but a pain in the rump. Also other random issues with the vehicle starts to just slow down all by its lonesome. Them. And the big problem with this vehicle is transmission failure, that's right. Because it's such a cheap vehicle to begin with, you know they're not putting in top grade gearbox, they're not putting in a ZF automatic transmission, they're putting in bare bones. And as a result, the transmission fails. But when a tranny fails, what do you think that means? Well, a vehicle of that magnitude and low cost to buy in and heavy depreciation means that a transmission will easily write that vehicle off. So any substantial repair means this thing heads straight to the junkyard. And with all of that said, be sure to check out that video. That's some of the worst vehicles they won't make 60,000 miles. Hope to see you next time. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye.